Well, folks, in the past few years, a series of events have reignited the debate about race in America in a big way. Uh, it's also led to a new wave of activism. After George Zimmerman was acquitted for the death of Trayvon Martin, many felt a call to action. The Black Lives Matter campaign was created in response to the number of African Americans killed at the hands of law enforcement. It quickly gained momentum and protesters across the U.S. rallied together to deliver a simple but powerful message. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter. The movement has had a far-reaching and controversial ripple effect and several new campaigns have emerged. White Lives Matter. Asian Lives Matter. All lives matter. But are these counter movements simply missing the point? We're bringing some more people into this conversation. Please welcome author, news commentator, and essence writer Goldie Taylor and filmmaker and creator of MTV's white people documentary, Jose Antonio Vargas. Okay, Goldie and Jose, are you surprised that the Black Lives Matter has splintered into many other groups? Honestly, I'm not. You know, if you look at the history of human rights struggles in this, on this planet, not just this country, there have always been secondary and tertiary movements to join. When you see other people edging towards liberty, edging towards equality, you want some, too. And so, you know, when you saw the end of slavery, for instance, the emancipation uh, of slaves in this country, you watched a civil rights movement come to growth, but you also watched women want their right to vote as well. That's how this all works. That's how change happens. Yes. I, don't, I mean, I don't think it's a surprise at all, especially given the demographic shift in our country. I mean, right now in America, Latinos are the largest minority group, and Asians are actually the fastest growing racial group. So race in America is beyond black and white. And so I think that's why we see all these movements kind of starting to splinter and kind of happen all around us. Can I ask you something? Yes. Your, your name is Jose yes. so my name is Jose Antonio Vargas. And I look like this. <laughs> it's it's called is, being Filipino. You're Filipino. Yeah, so when you see an Asian person with a Latino name, it means they're Filipino. There's a lot of them in Chicago. There's four million of us all across the United States. That's one way to fight racism. Let's all switch names. <laughs> I have a gentleman in the audience involved in the Black Lives Matter. Where's Billy? Hey, Steve. Hi. So basically, the reason I got involved with Black Lives Matter is because I'm an art teacher here in Chicago. So I teach the demographic, Mike Brown, Trayvon. I am the demographic. Yeah, I've been thrown on cars. I've been frisked and everything. And so when they find out my record is clear, they're like, oh, wow. But enough is enough. I've, it's been done too many times. It's ridiculous. So. My point of joining the Black Lives Matter movement is to basically just speak out on the truth until the federal government actually put that as the top thing that they want to get done. And I'm sorry, I haven't done anything to anybody. I don't have a record and I teach art to black boys and girls. But for me to be chastised the way I have been my entire life, okay, my entire life, it's unacceptable. You know, the Justice Department has to step in. So they have to step in a little bit more to me. Well, I agree with the yeah. Justice Department, but I think that this is a people problem. Yeah. Yeah. I think that this comes from the masses. Yeah. We cannot expect people sitting in a Senate seat or a Congress seat to fix what's wrong with millions and millions of people. I think it can start from a groundswell in our own communities to make a difference. The problem you have with waiting on the government is some of them people would fail this test so miserably <laughs> that you're asking those people to fix it for us. And, and I, that's why I think one of the problems is... But I do agree 100%. The Justice Department has to get involved with this. Uh, where is Andrea? Andrea. Hi, good. Hi, how are you? Good, good. What's your comment? Um, well, I understand your desire um, for respect, um, but what's hard for me to understand about the movement Black Lives Matter is individuals from the black community uh, burning down um, some of their own neighborhoods. To me, this doesn't show 
pride or that Black Lives Matter. Um, I just don't understand, you know, what's being accomplished from handling things in that manner. Mm -hmm. Let me help you from my perspective, okay. from what I know about it. Okay. Having lived through the 68 riots as a boy, when you take a group of people who have been oppressed mm -hmm. and feel powerless and there's no other recourse, they can't vote that hatred out, they can't suggest it out, they can't march it out. Anger takes over. Mm -hmm. They go to the streets with it. They go in anger. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. But they want your attention. But I think the media is to blame for that, too, because they make the focus that. Right, exactly. And all of a sudden, we forget that uh, a, an innocent child was murdered. Exact, exactly. And the focus becomes, look at them burning and looting. Whoa, 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 whoa. How about the loss of this boy's life? If you Absolutely. could be just as ticked. You know, but I understand exactly what you're saying. I really, really do. Look, I am the first one to tell you that all lives matter. I don't want this to happen to anybody's child. I'm a father. I'm a father. I have to tell my sons how to behave when they're stopped by the police, what to say when they ask for registration. I don't even let my sons tape their registration to the top of their dashboard so they don't have to go in the glove box. Oh, man, it's crazy what I'm doing with my sons now. I, don't, I, took, I went in my son's closet and took all their hoodies out because I just got tired of asking them not to wear no hoodie, man, because I don't want to tell their mama that your baby ain't coming home because he had a hoodie on. So I took all the hoodies out their closet. If this were happening to everyone, if someone else's child went to the store and didn't come back for buying a pack of Skittles, if somebody else's child didn't come home because their music was too loud, if somebody else's child would not come home because they had a cracked tail light on a car, if anybody else's child would not come home because they got stopped by a traffic violation, went to jail and wound up hung, if it happened to anybody else, there would be no need for Black Lives Matter. What has to happen here is we need more non-African Americans to just imagine if this were happening to you. That's all, that's all they need. Just imagine somebody told you that your baby or your neighbor wasn't coming home for any one of those reasons I listed. That's what the Black Lives Matter campaign is about. That's all.